How are you maximizing the gifts that God put on the inside of you? I knew that if God ordered the meal, he was responsible for the bill. <laughs> and I felt like he was going to pay for it. If he gave you the vision, he'll provide the provision. I had five dollars left in this plan and I hadn't even fed my family of eight. And that day I took that five and turned it into 60. I took that 60, put the five back that I started with and turned that into 600 by the end of the week. And that is the same money that I've been flipping for 17 years. 17. I did it with no debt. Cool. I did it with no knowledge of the business. I did it with no experience. And for all the people who got something to say about it, I did it with no credit too. <laughs> so when they say, ain't no way, there was uh, more to the story than that. Yeah. Now, before we hop into today's show, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Now let's jump into the video. So Mignon, you, I didn't know this about your story. And I've known you for years now. And if I am correct, you were a teen mom. When did you have your first? I had my first baby in 1993. And I had just graduated from high school. Okay. But I graduated from high school a year early. So I had gone to college early. Nobody prepared me for what the party was going to be like <laughs> on an HBCU campus. Oh, man. So second semester, I'm bringing home a baby bumblebee. Are you serious? What HBCU did you go to? I went to Xavier University. Are you serious? Yeah. yeah. And the shocking thing to me, and this is why I love your story, because every time we do something like this, right, something powerful comes from it, and I learn something brand new from you. And you had five kids before 25? Yeah, I had I had five kids at 21. 21? Yeah, by the time I was 21, I had five children. Three of them were a wedding present. Okay, okay, okay. okay. And then two of them I had given birth to, and I had my sixth one at 27. 27? Yeah. And didn't drop out of college? No, it just took me a little bit longer. <laughs> I, I even took my children to school with me. What? Sometimes they were in class. My baby Dylan, who now runs the business, yeah. would sit in the back of my Bible class. He would never be silent. He would never sit still. But when I needed him to go to class, yeah. it's like something happened to him and he would he would just color until the class was over. Man. Like God shut that baby's mouth so I could graduate. <laughs> Man, and yeah. today, we won't tell the people how old you are. You still look like, you still look like you're, about, you're about 30 years old, you know what I'm saying? But today, you're running a multi-million dollar cupcake business. And I don't even think it's a cupcake business. I think that you're running a multi-million dollar ministry because yeah. when people experience you and your cupcakes and your team, your staff, it's just a different experience, mm -hmm. right? And, and I want I want to talk about that because some people are, are experiencing you for the first time here on my show. Mm -hmm. And when people experience you, what what do they get? I know what I get. Yeah. I different. I get a deeper side of you. But when people experience you for the first time, um, what 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 will they get? I'm curious. I'm hoping that they get joy. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, that's my mission in life. I want to leave everyone experiencing Mignon Francois with joy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I feel like there is such a big value for joy in heaven because in the Bible it says those who sow in tears will reap in joy. And when you think about sowing and planting, yeah. it takes time for a harvest to grow. And I just think that when that <coughs> harvest is joy coming out of the things you've gone through, it just lets you know that everything that's happening to you uh -huh. It's happening for you. Yeah. It's something that you can plant and something is gonna grow out of it. And I believe that's what my whole experience has been about. Yeah. And so you, you wrote a book. <laughs> uh, I wrote a book. <laughs> you wrote a book. And this book, I was emotional when I read it. This is not the books. I want it to be fresh. Um, but um, I actually read a PDF version mm -hmm. that you and your team sent over, and it's called Made from Scratch, Finding Success Without a Recipe. And inside of this book, you talk a lot about choosing life. And really, if you just follow you, you're always promoting choose life. Mm -hmm. What does that mean exactly, choose life? That's such a good question. I was being awakened at 317 every morning. 
and it was like clockwork. Like, I, you, you ever saw that movie Groundhog's Day? I would yeah. turn over and see the clock. It would say 317. I, I would just awaken. Wow. And so I got up. I would check the house, check the stove, make sure my children were breathing. Yeah. And one particular day, I couldn't go back to sleep. And so I turned on the TV. And to me, the best television is either during Black History Month on PBS <laughs> or fundraising time. Right, right, right. And there was a guy on TV. He's passed away now. His name was Wayne Dyer. He said, the morning breeze has something to tell you. Mm -hmm. Do not go back to sleep. And that sounded crazy to me. Mm -hmm. like, I don't know nothing about no morning breeze talking <laughs> to me. All, I, all I'm listening for is Jesus now. Yeah. And so he said it a couple of times. But the third time he said it was, God is trying to speak to you, and this is the only time you'll listen. Mm -hmm. And so while you think that you're getting up to check the stove and the door and stuff, you're actually getting up to spend time with God because this is the only time you're silent enough to listen. Wow. And so I was like, okay, well, he can stay on my TV. And I, I listened more. He then began to explain that it would take me a week now to get out of the bed now that I knew that that's what I was getting up for. Mm -hmm. He was right. But he said, just put your feet on the floor. Eventually, you'll stand up. And that's exactly what happened. I found myself back in the same place where I had started. And underneath the um, table, I saw my Bible there. Because I was sitting there, OK, God, you want to talk? I don't know what you want to say. Please don't talk, because if I hear your voice right now, I'm just going to lose it. So don't say nothing. But I do want to <laughs> I do want to hear from you. Yeah. And so I saw my Bible, and I decided to open it. And I just let it fall wherever it opened. Mm -hmm. It opened up to chapter 3 of a particular book. I believe it was Ephesians 3. And I started at, chap at verse 17, mm -hmm. and I got my first message from God. Mm -hmm. And he let me know that he loved me, and he was about to show me that he had plans for me and that I needed to follow them. And so every morning I would go to chapter three, verse 17, read through until the end of the chapter or until it didn't make any more sense. Yeah. And then I go on to the next book. I read the whole Bible like that at 317 every morning for weeks. When God stopped awakening me on the last day, I fell into Deuteronomy. Mm -hmm. I believe it was chapter 30 and also in Joshua. And I think that was Joshua 1. It was like the first chapter of Joshua. And God said, I'm sitting before you, life and death, blessings and curses. Choose life. And what it said to me was, I've given you a lot of businesses, Mignon. I have had so many business, business ideas, and you start them, and you stop them, and you don't follow through. And God said to me, I'm not giving you nothing else. According to recent stats, only about half of African Americans have some form of estate planning put into place. This includes important documents like your wills, your trust, and your power of attorneys. Additionally, only about 60% of all people have life insurance coverage. But why is it so important for not just black people, but all of us to have these things put into place? You see, life insurance can provide financial protection for your loved ones in the event of your unexpected death. It can help cover funeral and burial expenses, uh, pay off debts, and even your mortgages. But here's what I really want you to consider. It can provide income for your loved ones to build wealth with. You see, estate planning, on the other hand, can help ensure that your assets are distributed according to your wishes after your death and that your loved ones are taken care of. If you truly love, and I mean this, if you truly, truly love your loved ones, don't leave their financial security at chance. I want you to get life insurance today. You can get a free quote with my friends over at Ethos by visiting anthonyoneal.com forward slash life insurance or by clicking the link in today's show notes. Protect your family's future and give yourself peace of mind. Don't be in heaven and you're full of joy and your family is here on earth struggling and stressed. Get life insurance today with my friends over at Ethos. Hey, now let's get back to today's show. I know it's a good one. So you better take what we've been talking about these last several weeks. It was everything that I would need to start the cupcake collection, was, which is the business he gave me at 317 in the morning. Wow. I would get up, get to my Bible, bring a pen, and I had a journal book. And the journal book is about a five by seven journal book, something I could take with me everywhere I go because a thought only lasts for scientifically 30 seconds unless you ink it in time. Right. So you have to write it down in order to not forget it. Because, you know, a lot of times you say to yourself, 
I'm gonna remember that when I get home. Right. And you just and don't. You, oh, yeah. man. And it's for me, it's not the same to put it in my phone. Okay. So I keep a pen with me and a and a journal yeah. from that day forward. And when God stopped awakening me, I had filled that entire journal book, even to the edges. When you close it, right. I had even written on the oh. edges of the book. I keep that in a safe now. When I when I finished being awakened, it was all of the instructions for what the cupcake collection was gonna be. The crazy thing about that was I didn't know how to bake. Mm. Not even out of a box. Mm. But I was listening to this guy on the radio. His name was Dave Ramsey. <laughs> ah, that's my guy. That's my guy. And he was telling people that they could get out of debt by having a bake sale or a garage sale. Yeah. And we had sold everything we had to get to Nashville. Mm -hmm. So I thought, okay, God, well, I guess it's going to be a bake sale. And I had these two daughters who were great in the kitchen. And I thought, well, we're going to do your little you know, you guys are gonna bake. What do you think about that? My oldest daughter said, okay. And my younger one was following her sister. Said, Let's do it. Let's do it. And shortly after we got started, my oldest daughter said, I'm not really interested in your little bakery idea. <laughs> I'm going back to New Orleans where we're from. Right. Um, and so without her, my youngest daughter wasn't interested anymore. So here I am, God has given me all of this stuff to make this business. And he says to me, Choose life, because if you don't do this or if you turn from it to the left or to the right, with anything that I've taught you to do, I'm going to take everything from you and you'll mm. die. But if you are careful to follow everything that I've said, I will make you prosperous and successful mm. at everything you do. Mm. And so I decided that at that point, I understood that God had, had basically told me he was tired of giving me things. And and the thing that I've learned and I want people to know is that I was 31 at the time okay. when, when this was happening. And I think a lot of times people think it's too late for them. You know, I, my life hadn't started. We were drowning in debt and brokenness. We were oftentimes living in that house without electricity. Mm. And I was 31 years old. Like you expect your life has started by now. There is a return on the investment that is your life that God is expecting from you. Mm. Just like you put your money in the bank, yeah, yeah. you want a return on your investment. Yeah. God wants a return on the investment that he's placed in you, right? Mm -hmm. We're made in his, in his image, so we want things that he wants. Yeah. And so God was tired of giving me ideas that I didn't follow through with. Mm. And so what he said to me was, choose life. And I understood that choosing life meant not taking another idea, not following it through. And I think a lot of times we think that we're afraid to fail. Mm. But really what it was for me was I was afraid to be successful. Wait, what? I was afraid to be successful because getting up and being successful means I always have to show up. I don't get to sleep in. That means when I don't feel like it, I still got to come to the table, That's right? Good. When I don't feel like it, I still got to produce the product. When I don't feel like it, if I don't feel good, I still got to show up. When I'm going through a divorce and losing everything I have, I still got to show up. And I got to be smiling about it. And I think that's the thing that people really are afraid of. They're not afraid to fail. You're afraid to succeed. <sighs> because of the responsibilities that comes with success. Yeah. That is so good. Because you're right. Mm -hmm. I was I've never been a scared. I've never been afraid to fail. I've been afraid to succeed because I'm scared of what comes with with success. Yeah. You know, cuz if you're successful, then you have more people who can see all your flaws. Yeah. And and then you have now you have people who expect you to show up. And now there's certain things you have to do. Mm -hmm. I'm curious, what helped you get over the fear of success, though? I was afraid of God. Ooh. Like, literally, I knew that I had heard him because I was waking up every day at 317. And when I mm. open my Bible, it just falls into this book. Chapter three, I go down to verse 17 thing, and there's something in that 317 thing. Right, right. And I get my first message. I was afraid that I was going to die. Yeah. And I think when God knocks on the door of your heart yeah. and he says, 
I want you to let me in. Yeah. You better be answering. Yeah. And I think that was that was my thing. I knew that if God ordered the meal, he was responsible for the bill. <laughs> and I felt like he was going to pay for it. <laughs> I like that. If God orders the meal, mm -hmm. he going to pay the bill. Yeah. You know, as a single man, that kind of, you know, <laughs> kind of stands out to me a little bit. It's almost like, hey, if I, if I, if I invite you, on a date. Yeah. I'm responsible for the bill. Yeah. And as a single woman, wow. I expect him cool. to pick up <laughs> Come on, mama. That's real, you know, though. So, so God being my father, yeah. right? God being the man in my life, yeah. I was expecting that if he was inviting me That's into so this relationship good. to do this thing with him, in collaboration with he him, take care he was going to take care of me. Because if he don't take care of you, it's not just you looking bad. It's it's our God looking bad. And he, he ain't trying to look He's bad. He's not doing that. Ooh! That's, <laughs> that's good right there. Now, I like that. Yeah. That's Oh, that's good. That's good. If God says it, do it. Because he going to take care of the bill. Yeah. Wow. And he has shown me that he would take care of me better than any man ever has. Ouch. My father's, my earthly father's first responsibility was to show me my heavenly father. Yeah, 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 yeah. My father was a hardworking man who always was at work. He provided for his children. Yeah. I don't think there was anything that we ever really wanted. Yeah in the earth that we couldn't have. Wow. Like me coming to this place of understanding took me all the way around the mulberry bush to, to learn that about my father. But at the end, when he died, I saw his work as being done. Wow. And what I was left with was a heavenly father that he represented, who I could go to and say, Daddy, I'm, I need you to do this for yeah. me. And he does it. Yeah. And that's the way my father was. You know, you guys, Mignon has written a book that I really want you all to to get. Um, she's been on my show several times, um, and um, I'm pretty sure y'all have seen her go viral several times of things that she said on my show from the table to our Black History panel that has over a million views. And she has a book called Made from Scratch, Finding Success Without a Recipe. Uh, it is on pre-order right now if you're watching this in the month of April. Uh, but it comes out May, in the month of May. And I want to encourage you to get this book. I've had the opportunity to read through it. Um, and I fully endorse it. Um, I don't know if it's going to make it uh, on, on the actual book. Uh, but you know what? I'm, she is doing some amazing things. Some of the best cupcakes in the entire world. I'm just going to be honest with y'all. Uh, it, it is. It is. I call Mignon my spiritual mama. My earthly mothers, my practical birth mother and my other mother of every Thanksgiving and every Christmas for like the last, I want to say, five years mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. uh, they expect her <laughs> to ship them cupcakes to North Carolina and to California, even to the point to where I forgot last year. And her team called me the day before Christmas Eve. It was the 23rd. Hey, we didn't get your order. And I was like, shoot. <laughs> and my mom was like, hey, did we order cupcakes? I was like, mom, I forgot. Christmas Eve cupcakes arrived to Cali and to North Carolina. Uh, that's just how good her cupcakes are. And if her cupcakes are that good, it's because of the story and the journey of what she has gone through. And I think the spirit are just on them cupcakes, the spirit of it. And it's like you went from $5 to $5 million plus now in sales. I don't know where you are now in sales. Mm -hmm. That was years ago when we when we, you were saying $5 million. Yeah, that was $5 million. Cupcakes. cupcakes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that wasn't dollars. Ooh. That was five million cupcakes. cupcakes. You took five dollars. <laughs> yeah. And it turned into five million cupcakes. Yeah. And I like your tagline: finding success without a recipe. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people right now 
are relating to that. Like, how yeah. do I, how do I find success? Yeah. You know, like, how do I do something of substance? How do I, how do I know to do what God has given me if I don't know how to? Mm -hmm. This is you so said true. you didn't know how to do cupcakes. I didn't know how to bake. Now you have. I mean, it's not my opinion, y'all. I'm talking about publications. I'm talking about people who actually rate cupcakes. Mm -hmm. Said she is number number one. Yeah. But you didn't have the recipe. Yeah. You didn't know how to do it. No. Let's talk about that a little bit because it's like now you have several, you have a couple of stores, several people working for you. I mean, and you have freedom. We're going to talk about that because you said something to me a while ago about freedom. That just shifted my whole mindset. But how did you go from no recipe to having a strategy and recipe now? Yo, real quick, you guys, are you looking to change your career here in the year of 2023? If so, look no further than Bethel School of Technology, the only Christian online tech boot camp in the world. According to a recent report, black people make up just about 4% of the U.S. technology workforce. But you see, at Bethel Tech, who I partner with for this year, they believe that all people, including us black people, should have access to the lucrative and fulfilling opportunities in the tech industry. Now, with their nine-month program, you'll gain the essential skills you need to start a successful career in technology. And let's not forget the earning potential. You see, according to Indeed, the average salary of a software developer in the U.S. is around $103,000. Say what? You know, you can choose from programs like the cybersecurity and UI UX design and launch your tech career or even a tech business ignited with passion and purpose. So listen, we're going to skip Skip the debt and we're going to invest into yourself for just nine months that can change the next nine years of your life. All you got to do is join Bethel Tech today to achieve your career aspirations. Visit anthonyoneal.com slash Bethel or click the link in today's show notes today so you can register and start a new journey of your life. Now, you know what? Let's get back to the show. But this is a good one today. Let's keep it about. <laughs> Yeah, what I want people to know is that every stupid thing you've ever had to do is taking you from where you are to where you want to be. And so sometimes we think, I'm not supposed to be right here in my life. I should be further. Yeah. I should have accomplished something else. And you see all the people around you yeah. making it and you're the only one that hasn't found success yet. And that was my life. Mm. And I had gone to Xavier University. I was on scholarship. Yeah when I got pregnant, that kind of put me in a position where I had to drop out of Xavier and go do something that was gonna be quicker. Okay. So I decided to go pick up nursing somewhere else. Okay. That didn't work out. And then I just, I, I ended up meeting my husband. Okay, was, 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 was the key word. Yeah. I want y'all to know y'all saying husband. <laughs> wait, 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 was husband. That, that's what yeah. you're saying, I, I got you, I'm I following. ended up meeting him mm -hmm. and then we get married and move to another city, so I just, life picked up. Okay. And so, you know, when I, when I was doing that, looking for my place, I found what I was supposed to do. I finally put down on a piece of paper what it was that I wanted to study, and it was always journalism. Mm -hmm. I, had all, I had this writing fever on the inside of me, so I had gone from st being a pre-med student okay. to being a nursing student. Okay. I couldn't apply the science to the human body. I was flunking out of my classes. Then I end up dropping out of college to pick it up later to follow my passion, which was writing. And then I also got a degree. So I, I ended up graduating with a dual degree in mass media and psychology because of all the pre-work that I had done right. as a pre-med student. And then I got, uh, I picked up a passion for photography. Little did I know that God was setting me up for a business. He was going to show me 17 years from then. Ooh. And I became my first marketing person. Okay. I took all the photography that you used to see on our website. Yeah. I took those pictures. Are you serious? I was the one who laid out all of the pamphlets and things. I knew how to promote myself because I had gone to school for that. But it was in the kitchen where I was trying to figure out how to do what Dave Ramsey was telling people to do, have yeah. a bake sale. Right. I called my grandmother on the phone and I said, Grandma, how do you make cake? And she goes, baby, I don't have a recipe. <laughs> you know, pinch this much together, you know, get this ingredient. She was talking about ingredients that are not even in the stores anymore, you know, because she's 
old Older. school, okay, right? Okay, okay. And so I realized something as I was trying to follow my grandmother's recipe. This is unbalanced. This is an unbalanced chemical equation. Mm. Had I been able to balance chemical equations at Xavier, I would be a doctor right now. Mm. I couldn't make it work. Mm. But it was mixing up the things and putting in the, the rising ingredients that I realized I could manipulate cake and make it do whatever I wanted it to do. And so I always let people know I'm really not a baker. I'm a scientist. Ooh. I'm a food scientist. Yeah, yeah. And so it was actually doing chemical reactions in the kitchen 17 years later, trying to make a dollar out of 15 cents. Yeah, 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 yeah. That all of the things that I had ever done came together as a recipe. Yeah. So now I make I make all of the recipes that are on our lineup. Yeah. We've been voted as the best cake in Tennessee. Yeah. We've been voted as the best cake in Louisiana. Yeah. And I stand as one of as the only business that has that um the only bakery that has that um ranking yeah. in more than one state because that's the only states where my bakery exists. Mm -hmm. We also rank as one of the top 10 in the nation. Our food truck was one of the first ones introduced in Nashville. Yeah. And still carries a top, it's you know, beautiful. ranking. It's beautiful. And thank you. We call her Joy. You're, you're <laughs> next to a restaurant that I used to go to, and I'll never forget, uh, when I first met you, it was at Dave Ramsey's office. Mm -hmm. And you blessed us when I was on staff there. And I'll never forget, when you was on the stage, I said, I felt something in my spirit you're supposed to be connected to her. Mm -hmm. And I was like, how do I do this? And I'll never forget, um, I sent a message to you, and I was like, hey, um, I, I don't know what it is, but I want to come by the shop and get your story. Mm -hmm. And ever since then, I've always called you one of my spiritual mothers. Yeah. Because every time I get near you, in the beginning of our show, you said you want people to experience joy. Mm -hmm. I've learned so much from you spiritually. I experience a joy. You always have a smile on your face. You're always honest with me. You've told me some hard things about mm -hmm. myself. I'm like, oh, <laughs> Jesus. You know what I'm saying? When I was making the transition, you asked me some hard questions. Mm -hmm. And I was like, this is why. But I got to tell you, that recipe, <laughs> I ain't never liked vegan stuff. Yeah. And then when you made me try that vegan cupcake, mm -hmm. I couldn't tell it was vegan. Yeah. And that's my goal. That's my goal. I want to be the best at what my wheelhouse yeah. is. I don't want to do other things. I don't need to be the best at cookies. I make some amazing cookies, but I'm not trying to sell them. I don't need the, to be the best at donuts. I want to find the best donut shop and yeah. eat them. Right? <laughs> but I want to be the best at cake because yes. that's my lane. No, you're the best. Yeah. Well, thank you. No, I'm serious. You're the best. I mean, I order them. Yeah. I, I haven't even tried no other cupcake <laughs> in any other city. I'm like, if I want cupcakes, I'm just going to call my people. I'm, yeah. Drew, hey! I need some cupcakes. All right, bro. Where, and she's I'm got you. She, she, I'm in like, there here the we, We're beginning to even anticipate. Like you said, I, I remember going into the bakery, and it, it was Christmas time, and they were scrambling around. I said, does Anthony have an order? She was like, oh, let me call him right now. You know, I said, just put the order together, because you know he is required to send those cupcakes. I am coming <laughs> to get them. I'm telling you that right now. You said to me a few years ago, you said one of the best ways of freedom is through ownership in entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. Do you still feel that way? Yeah. I definitely know that I can own my time. <sighs> I can own my decisions. Yeah. Definitely one of the things I'm also teaching the people who are on my team mm -hmm. is about ownership. And you say, why would you say that when they work for you? Come on, talk. You know, for me, it's like they are in the business of their own labor. Yes. And so I want them to know that even Adam and Eve were required to do to work yes. and to do something. Yeah. And they can take their labor and when they see it from that angle, they steward over it yes. differently. And I just believe that entrepreneurship is the way to freedom. And when I look back on my history mm -hmm. and my ancestry, and the women who came before me, whose names and faces you will never see, names you will never know. Yeah. You will experience them because you will know my name. Ooh. 
and you will not forget it because I'm going to offer you the best that I have available. Yeah. And the thing about it is, is there might be somebody watching who's a baker and who's, who says, she ain't better than me. You know, <laughs> that's not, I'm not trying to be in competition with Come on. anybody. Come on. I believe that collaboration is the new competition. Yeah. And all I'm trying to do is go into those places where we've been historically enslaved and redeem the time. Come on. Because my grandmother couldn't have free ent enterprise. My father was born on a plantation in 1947. Mm. My grandmothers couldn't have free enterprise. Mm. And so I just want to be able to be the best at living in this sugar business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Being a descendant of enslaved people yeah. from a sugar plantation. And I think that is, uh, I, that, that's nothing but God. You know, here's my problem. Why is it that if we strive to be the best, it means we strive to compete? Mm -hmm. I think all of us should strive to be the best. Yeah. You should strive to be the best cupcake um, person, which I believe, in my opinion, you are. But then you watching. You may be in the cupcake business. Strive to be the best. Yeah. You know, and then, hey, how do you partner together? How do we come out here and we yes. impact people and inspire people? It doesn't have to take away from us striving to be the best. I want to be one of the best podcasters and, and YouTubers when it comes to bringing people financial freedom. But my brothers earn your leisure. They're killing the game. Mm -hmm. I'm okay, how do we partner together? Yeah. How do we help more people? Mm -hmm. But we're both striving to be the best. Yeah, you look outside of the box and look for ways that you, that you shine, that you can bring some light to the yes. other person, right? And something my five-year-old said, He's 21 now, but you know, when he was five years old, I had been working every day like it was a job for two years to open up this business. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing that I think people forget. You you see me now mm -hmm. and you think, oh, she showed up on the scene. I was working two years like it was a job before my store ever even opened. This is 17 years of my life that ended me up on this table, yeah. even though it's somebody's first, you know, yeah. experience with me. Yeah. My five-year-old said to me, I was driving down the street and I had been working every day. There were no cupcake shops in Nashville. And we were driving down the street and there's a big sign with, give us a swirl. <laughs> this cupcake place was coming soon. Yeah. I slammed on my brakes and started to cry in the middle of Division Street, which is a busy, is. you know, intersection in Nashville. It is. And my five-year-old taps me on the shoulder from the back seat and says, Mommy, there's room. Just because she's first doesn't mean she's going to be the best. Mm. And so I wipe my tears, turn the corner, and stop the car again. And I'm just looking at the sign, and I'm crying. He said, Mommy, there's room for cupcakes. Mm. I never forgot mm. what that five-year-old said. He's such a good businessman now mm -hmm. as, as an adult. All of my children are. But okay. what he let me know was, if you were the only cupcake shop mama, you can't serve all the people so in this can. one city. So can't. So let her do her thing on this side of the city, and you go do your thing on that side of the city, yeah. and you both can win. Yeah. And that's what I found, yeah. it, that I learned things from watching them come first. Yeah. It was a blessing that I wasn't first out of the gate because there were mistakes that, in my opinion, that were being made yeah. that I would have never wanted mm to present my business as. And my son told me there was room. So as other ones began to pop up on every corner, it seemed like, yeah. I would welcome them to the neighborhood and to the business. Yeah. I hope you do well and cheer them on. Mm. I wore a crown for several years as the sugar queen. And when, on the, the last time the competition was run, I gave up the crown. Like, I, I didn't want to compete because I wanted somebody else to shine. Yeah. And the thing about it is, is, you know, that allowed me to exit the competition on my terms. And from, from then on, I began to sort of 
have this light, be this lighthouse in the neighborhood to show other people what good business looks like yeah. and then to let them know what they could do if only they believe. You know, one of the things I'm really excited about this book is um, you're very big, you love all people, but mm -hmm. you're very big with the, and, and really, I'll say this correctly. I know how to say <laughs> it. You have a heart for the, for the black community. Mm-hmm. Um, and if anyone follows you, you know you're very big on the black community, but you love everyone. Mm -hmm. Well, you partner with the publishing company that yeah. is very big in the black community as yeah. well. Yeah. R.H. Boyd, and I know their their president very, very well, LaDonna Boyd. What's up, LaDonna? Um, and their story is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. You know, LaDonna is the first female five generations in to a all black publishing company. Yes. And then you have a heart to where you want to help the black pubs the black community because your ancestors couldn't do certain things because they were black. Yeah. So you partner with a black publishing company uh, to write this book and it's going to help all people, but I really do believe this book is for that black. Yeah. Black individual. Yeah. I was I would say that my book doesn't have any color in it as far as skin color goes, yeah. but I think that this is our season. Yes. I think this is the year of black women being able to come to the table and be successful and make a mark on the world. And the reason why I chose to do this with R.H. Boyd is there were offers on the table yeah. from just about every major publishing company, yeah. three of the largest ones wanted to talk to me about this book and had wow. brought me to the publishing round table. Wow. But the reason why I did it with her is because we're two women who are the descendants of enslaved people. Yeah. Her great grandfather, I think fourth great grandfather, opened this printing press when it was illegal for us to read. Mm. Mm. So that kind of grit and sacrifice is what I wanted to publish my story of being also the descendant of enslaved people. Yeah. And I just thought that this was the place and the only place that I could do at least the first one with, because there's more coming out of me. This was just... This is the beginning. This is just coming out of the blocks. What are we going to get inside of this book? Like, what is something that's like, Archie, right, guys, this, when you read this, this is what you're walking away with. Yeah. I promise God that if he would make me successful, I would tell anybody who would listen about what they could do if they believe. Mm. And I can't get to everybody. Mm -hmm. So this is for 317 in their morning, mm. wherever they are, to be able to collide with God so that they can see my situation and know that they are not alone. Mm. That if they're sitting in a house with no electricity, trying to figure out how are you supposed to get your children to school today, because yeah. that was me, yeah. that they can have someone else who's been there too and let them know that they are not alone. Mm -hmm. I hope that they know even if they've been a stay-at-home mom, which is what I was, and your husband decides that he wants to walk away, mm -hmm. that God will be a better man to you mm -hmm. than any man could have ever been. I want them to know that people who in the comments say, ain't no way. She started this business with $5 and turned it into all that. That miracles are still happening mm -hmm. every single day in 2023. God is able yeah. to do exceedingly yeah. and abundantly above all you can ask or think. And for the naysayers who say that she was being irresponsible having all those children and she couldn't take care of them, I didn't choose this path for myself. <laughs> This was not what I decided to do and how I decided to be it. But God pulled me through something so that I could help other people mm. out. I believe that we go through things so we can pull other people through them. It wasn't the path that I decided to take, but it was the it was the path or the lesson that was given to me. Yeah. And I just think about Jesus kneeling down on the ground when when all those men came to accuse this woman and he begins to write on the ground and says, whichever one of you who doesn't have any sins, you go ahead and you go ahead and cast the first stone to kill her. Yeah. And then when she looks around, they've all left because they know they've got skeletons in their closet. And Jesus says, I don't see anybody here that's trying to talk about you. 
And so that's the thing that I want people to know that no matter what you don't have, I was sitting in the back of my house with no electricity, mm. trying to do the Dave Ramsey baby steps plan. Mm -hmm. When my neighbor knocked on the door and made me an offer, I had $5 left in this plan and I hadn't even fed my family of eight. This was all we were gonna have to eat for a week. This $5 is so all we were gonna have to eat for a week when she asked me to make cupcakes. Cause they were going crazy in my Germantown, Nashville neighborhood about these cupcakes that I was making in this former crack house that mm -hmm. I lived in. Mm -hmm. And they were calling it lemon crack in my neighborhood. Lemon and so she wanted to pass that out to you know all of her friends. <laughs> and when she knocked on the door, I was like, okay, God, why would you bring this to me when I don't have any money? All I got is $5. My cars had been repossessed. So I don't even have really a way to get to the store. God said, in that moment, I feed birds and they don't work and they don't toil. How much more will I provide for you who looks like me? When the lilies of the field and all of their splendor are here today and gone tomorrow. And even, even Solomon, who was the richest man that ever lived, wasn't clothed like one of these. Mm. Just do what I asked you to do. Yeah. And I'll, I will provide. And that day I took that five and turned it into 60. I took that 60, put the five back that I started with and turned that into 600 by the end of the week. And that is the same money that I've been flipping for 17 years. 17. I did it with no debt. Cool. I did it with no knowledge of the business. I did it with no experience. And for all the people who got something to say about it, I did it with no credit too. <laughs> So when they say, ain't no way, there was ah, more to the story than that. Yeah. And I just believe that when God tells you to do something, he's also responsible to say, now do this, now do that. And I followed and I was obedient. That's what I am. I'm obedient. Link for the book is in the, is in the show description. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. You need to get the book, you know, because some of y'all watching right now, you, you, you were a team mom. Um, and some of you haven't healed from it because you're listening to what everyone else is saying about you. And, oh, girl, you should have did this. You should have did that. Um, you know, Mignon, you, you remind me of my good friend Sarah Jake. She was a team mom. Mm -hmm. and, Love her. And look how powerful she is today. Look how powerful you are. Look look at what you all have accomplished. And I think what, what we have to do is start studying people and get around the right people who have made similar mistakes. And we learn from them on how to how to keep on moving. And she won't say it, but she has an amazing team, an amazing staff who love her, who respect her, and she's doing some amazing things. Uh, but she started from scratch. Some will say she started from scratch with, with a mistake. Heck, I remember at one point in time that I thought I was a father. Some people say, Anthony, well, that was just, that wasn't wise of you. It, it probably wasn't. But I can't allow our past. We cannot allow our past to determine where we're going in our future. God determines that. And I want to encourage you all to get the book, Made From Scratch, Finding Success Without a Recipe. Uh, the link will be in today's show notes. I, I promise you I'll get it. But now we're going to have some fun with my mama before she leaves. She, she doesn't even know I was going to ask her this stuff right here. But mama, because you said, you said husband. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You said husband. You know what I'm saying? We, we ain't going to put your age out Okay. There, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mama, how is it how is it dating as a older I'm gonna say older as a wiser successful woman I'm curious yeah sometimes I wonder or sometimes I ask myself why am I in this position that I'm in mm -hmm. um I had done all the things I was supposed to do yeah um in the book people are gonna learn things about my story that I've never said publicly okay things my children should be broken for mm. that they watched happen. Mm -hmm. And when my husband left, God said, give him everything he asked for. I will give it back to you. Wait, wait, so you ain't get 50% of uh, everything? I, I gave him everything he asked for. The only thing I got to do was buy his portion of the house where the bakery is wow. back from him. 
Wow. And everything else that he took, he lost. Wow. And God said, I was driving down the street uh, one day and God said, I still am going to give you the replacement on that husband too. Mm. I haven't forgotten what I told you. Because I know I was made to be a wife. Right, right. right. Um, but I don't want to, I want to steward well over this single season I'm in. Absolutely. I went from my mother's house to my husband's house mm -hmm. to answering to my children. So I went to answer to my parents, to answer to my husband, to answer to my children. Mm -hmm. So I think that God is just giving me a time to answer to myself, Ooh. to get up and decide that I want to go and fly to Chicago I'm and eat dinner you. and be back home, you know, by breakfast in the morning Listen. with myself, not by myself. Oh, that's so good. Because every time I call you somewhere, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she enjoying this single life right here, boy. Because I'll be, I'll be like, look, look, mama, where you at? And I'm like, I'm in Nashville. I'm going to get some cupcakes. Oh, I'm not there. Just go by the shop. Well, where are you? <laughs> then one time I asked you, what's his name? She was like, well, I'm, I'm talking to someone. I mean, I'm like, oh, well, uh, that's good. Yeah. I don't. Well, lock, it, lock her down. Lock her down. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, I mean, I, I, I believe it, though. Mm -hmm. I just, you, whoever marries you, Wow. I think I think I keep hearing things like and my mother says it like this. I carry myself like a married woman so people don't know that yeah, I'm single. Yeah, um, I think think that my husband's going to know that mm, that your husband's going to know that you're single. Yeah, I think my husband's going to know that I'm his wife and that yes. I've been carrying myself for him. That's good right there. Yeah. So who that's God <laughs> protecting you. Yeah. From like. The, the 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 weirdo. Yeah, I have been through um, so many things in my life. I I would say that God always sends me women to be on my team and to work with me for all the things that I've been through. Yeah. Um. I I would say that there has never been a woman on my team that has been through something that I didn't experience. Wow. I I would say to all the beautiful girls who are watching. Mm -hmm. Um that feel like nobody sees them. Yeah. Um, and to all the people who feel like they've never been pretty enough, mm. that regardless, you don't know the challenge and the journey that those beauty queens oh, have man. gone on. And people often say, I can't believe that you're single. And I'm like, well, you also can't believe what has happened to me at the hands of men. Oof. I ain't want to go there on this show because I think I would have been crying because mm -hmm. when I read that book, I, you never told me that part of mm -hmm. your story. And I was like, wait, what? Mm -hmm. And even my content um, writer who who uh, I had her read the book as well, um, she was like, did you know? I was like, no, nah, I didn't even know. Yeah. And I couldn't even find myself to come and have that conversation with you. Because mm -hmm. I was like, you went through that? Mm -hmm. And the reason why it's hard for me to have a conversation, because I couldn't tell that you've been through that. Mm -hmm. Because you don't treat men wrong. Yeah. After what you've been through with men. I should be a bitter You black should woman. be a bitter black woman towards men. Mm -hmm. And I've never sensed that with you. Yeah. And I mean, if you've connected me with a lot of other men, and they all love you. And mm -hmm. I'm like... Wow, and I respectfully say this. There are some ladies who've been cheated on mm -hmm. and haven't gone through even a quarter of what you're going through, mm -hmm. and they can't stand us men. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, yeah, Mion, whenever she get married, you're going to be a yeah. real man. Oh, when, who, whoever he is, he's going to be treated like a oh, king. Oh, my God. <laughs> he's not going to know what happened to I'm him. like, oh, my God. <laughs> well, so but I hope that I get the same thing, you, you know, in return. I believe... God for that. And I'm excited to be able just to have this conversation yeah. for other people who are watching, yeah. who are looking at me and saying, but you're successful and you have this and you have that. Like, but you know, been through it. yeah, I've been, I've been through it. And a lot of people want to have the experiences that I have, mm -hmm. but you don't want to go through what I've been through to get here. Man, listen, listen here. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't, I don't wish I don't wish what you've been through on any woman. Mm -hmm. 
And literally when I read that part of the book, I just prayed for you. Yeah. And I prayed saying, God, thank God for you. Mm -hmm. And thank God for him being in your life. Mm -hmm. Because if it wasn't for God, we wouldn't be at this table having a conversation. If it wasn't for God. And I just think that's the part that I'm like, wow, God, you... Like, he saved your life not just for you and your kids, but for people like myself. Yes. I believe that. I believe that that's why God told me to choose life. Yeah. Because I need to live for the person who didn't think mm. they could go on anymore. Mm. I need to live for the people who are in the valley of decision of saying, this is way too much. Yeah. And I want them to know that somebody has yeah. it worse yeah, yeah, yeah. than you. Yeah. And you need to live so that they can too. too. Yeah, yeah. They need to see you living yeah. so that they can also live. And that's what I'm here doing. I'm living to show other young people that it doesn't matter if you're 31. I was 33 when this business started. As a matter of fact, it wasn't until I was 33 that I saw myself as beautiful for the very first time. Oh. I talk about that in the book as well, that God in my name had said to the world that he wanted them to know that he thought I was beautiful. Mm. It's what my name means. But I lived my whole life thinking I was ugly Mm. because of the way I had been beaten down, Mm. you know, by the circumstances. I I know the day that I first found out I was ugly. It was in the first or second grade on the playground in Aurora, Colorado, where we were living. And it was during a game of tag. Mm. And so you got to get the book to hear the rest of the story. Yeah, we're going to get the book. We're going to get the book. So listen, y'all, we're already over time. But what we're going to do is we're going to put the link to this book in today's show notes. Um, If you're going to get it in the month of April, it's on pre-sale. So go get it. Go ahead and get your copy. And then I promise you it will bless you. Um, It's going to bless you. Um, it's going to challenge you in a good way spiritually, uh, but it's, I believe this is going to uh, elevate you and help you elevate yourself to the point where you need to be at for success. Um, and it's so funny how we have so many ladies, especially like black ladies, come on here and just drop so much gold and wisdom. And so I just want to say thank you. Thank you, Mama. I call it Mama, y'all. She's. I don't have a lot of people, especially ladies in my life, who I allow just to say things to me. And she'll literally text me in the middle of the night and be like, son, and just dump it on me spiritually. And then she don't even know it. I'll be thinking about that for like a whole week. Mm-hmm. I'll read over it. I'll study over it. And one of them I gave to my mom, mm-hmm. my biological mom. And she said, I love mm-hmm. her. Yeah. It's the same prayer. It's the same thought. And, and my mamas, they don't play about who speaks into their son. Mm-hmm. Now it's just like, me on? Oh, hey. yeah. We ain't even questioning I, I was so excited when you took her on a shopping spree and you oh, surprised yes. her. Like, I felt like I was on that with her. I was literally screaming, my mama loved you know, at the phone. I was just so excited She about thought we that. was going to coach. Yeah, yeah. CJ was with me when we did. Yeah. Like, literally, that's my mom. Like, yeah. her response, like, Louis? <laughs> Louis Vuitton? I was like, Mom, get anything out of here. Because my mom has been through, respectfully saying it's through hell, because mm-hmm. of some things that me and my brother put her through. Mm-hmm. You know? And the least I could have done is give something of that special. And I, I plan to do more for my parents. Mm-hmm. You know? And so um, I had to have you on the show. Because I want my community, my family, my tribe, you all, to get her book. Um, if you love me, I promise you, you're going to love her more. Um, you're going to learn more about her. And I promise you, um, you'll be blessed by the story. So um, get the book. And you're going to learn a lot. You know, And especially if some of y'all ladies are feeling like I'm not attractive. Especially if some ladies are feeling like, hey, I've made some mistakes. I've done some things I should not have done. I promise you, you're going to learn some things from my mama here. And you're going to see where she has come from and how super successful she is. And it's going to bless you. So get the book. We'll drop it in today's show notes. We love you all. Thank you all so much. And we'll see you on the next show.